name's Soraya Cottrell, and um, yes, I'm co-owner of Home Instead Senior Care Eastbourne, but I'm also the person that's in the way of your lunch, so I'm very aware of that, so I will try to keep it brief. So, um, today I'm going to talk to you for the next 20 minutes about a case study and about somebody who we support who lives with dementia to live at home independently. I'm going to share with you some of the challenges, and believe me, there have been lots of challenges, but also successes that we have had. And I'll share some practical guidance and tips on how to make sure that the person living with dementia maintains their dignity and their choices are respected. So just a little bit about us. So we opened up our office in Eastbourne in 2015. And we provide um, flexible, person-centered care that's relationship-led in order to be able to help our clients remain independent at home. And after two years of being opened, we were rated as outstanding by the Care Quality Commission, which we're so proud of. Currently, we provide over 2,500 hours of care on a monthly basis. And over 50% of our clients either live with Alzheimer's disease or some form of dementia. So, before I became Director of Care and Registered Manager and we joined home instead, I actually worked as a nurse and I was a liver transplant coordinator, clinical nurse specialist in one of the liver transplant units just down the road from here. Now what I really enjoyed about being a nurse was being able to be a part of the positive impact on how well somebody recovers from a serious illness. I loved being able to be, develop relationships with my patients and I loved being able to make them smile when they felt unwell. That to me was making a difference to their lives and I really enjoyed it. However, what I did struggle with was the nature of my role. It was very busy. I worked in a very busy unit. So it meant that I didn't always have that time to be able to provide holistic care to my patients. I wasn't always able to promote feelings of reassurance and comfort when they needed it. So. My husband opened up Home Instead in April 2015, and this was supposed to be his journey. He wanted me to join him, but I didn't really want to work with him because I thought it wouldn't work. Sorry, Ian. Sorry. Anyway, um, so I realised that two months into his journey that I really wanted to join him because Home Instead, what it does is it, it does everything that I was missing as a nurse, that time to care, that ability to be able to build relationships with people in a non-clinical setting, and that's what I yearned for. So I joined Home Instead and I work as the Director of Care. So I'm responsible for making sure that we're compliant with all legislative and regulatory requirements. I'm also responsible for making sure that our caregivers are trained, that they conti are continuously trained throughout their journey with us, and that they're supported to be able to provide exceptional care in a person-centred way to all of our clients. I'm also responsible for the management of our client's journey throughout their time with Home Instead, which starts with the initial consultation, person-centred care planning, risk assessments and ongoing reviews and support. So one gentleman who we support is Keith. Now, I asked Keith if I could speak about him today and he said yes, but he said on one proviso that I don't refer to him as old. No, he's not old. He's 73 years young. Now, he was diagnosed with de dementia in 2015, and he has got an impaired short-term memory, but he's got great long-term recall. And he's able to talk about his life when he was younger, and he'll tell you lots of stories about when he worked as, as a successful salesman. He loves dancing, and he has a passion for jazz music, loves going to jazz clubs, and he also loves going to the pub for a cheeky little beer. I mean, who doesn't? I know I would like one after this. So anyway, um, Keith was referred to us by Steps in 2015. Now, they are commissioned by our local authority to support people like Keith, to help maximise their finances, and to help them to find care if that's what they require. Now, Keith wasn't doing any of those things that I mentioned earlier when I first met him. Um, and Steps contacted us to help to see whether we could help him. Now the reason why they were contacted was because of the fact that his neighbours had been concerned about his welfare. He'd been found on a couple of occasions down near the lo local shops where he lives, confused and unable to find his way home again. Keith never married, he didn't find the right lady, he doesn't have any children and he has no family that lives nearby apart from his sister that lives many miles away and she doesn't really have much contact with him. Also, sadly, all of his friends had dropped away and he was socially isolated. 
He was in poor health, his legs were ulcerated, and he had recurrent cellulitis where his legs would become infected. And the district nurses were struggling to maintain the health of Keith's legs. They would go and see him very regularly, but he would forget what the dressings were for and would continuously remove them. He wasn't taking his medication. He didn't remember what it was for, so it would ultimately go in the bin. And he was malnourished. He had no routine. He didn't eat regularly. And he'd mainly eat takeaways as and when he could get down to the local parade of shops. He found it very difficult carrying out tasks. He would get really distracted, getting up to make himself a cup of coffee, but then walking past a photograph or a magazine and then becoming engaged with that and forgetting the reasons why he got up. And then ultimately forgetting to make himself a drink. When I met him, he had copious amounts of notes to himself, post-it notes, with letters to himself, with dates and times of hospital appointments, where he was trying to remember to make, these, to make the appointments to get there, but he wasn't able to get there. He was neglecting his home, he wasn't managing his finances, but most of all, he used to be a very smart, well-presented gentleman when he was younger, but when I met him, he was neglecting his personal hygiene. He looked dishevelled and unkempt. So Step supported him with setting up that care with us. And it was really important for me to get to know Keith as the person that he is. So we sat down and did the consultations to, to help develop his care plan. And it was so important for me to find out the things that Keith wasn't able to do, but the things that he loved to do, the things that he used to love to do, and the things that he wanted to achieve. We also spoke about the things that worried him and the things that frightened him and upset him. And we also filled out the This Is Me document developed by the Royal College of Nursing together. And that was at the very beginning. On an ongoing basis, we continuously go out to see him on a regular basis to carry out review of his needs. And we also provide ad hoc visits depending on his changing needs and if there are any concerns in relation to his care voiced by his caregivers. However, that's ongoing. What did Keith say to me at the very beginning? These are some of the things that he said to me, and these are all still really relevant. He said, I don't want anyone making decisions for me. Now, quite understandably, Keith hates it when somebody comes in and tries to make decisions for him and tries to take control. It makes him feel like he has no control over his life, and he wants to continue to manage his own finances, choose what he has to eat, choose where he goes, and have control over his life. He doesn't want to go into a care home. He wants to stay at home where he feels safe and he feels comfortable. And he also wants to remain well because he's also said to me that if he were ever to be admitted into hospital, he'd walk straight back out again. He wants to be socially acceptable. He wants to be able to go back outside and go and enjoy the things that he used to love to do. And he didn't want to go to the day centres that were being offered to him. So we have faced a lot of challenges trying to support Keith, um, and I've just highlighted a few of them. So Keith initially didn't want to have any support in place, but he, he did agree to having a visit every day. Now, Keith's sister had no understanding of dementia itself and how or how it was affecting Keith. So she felt that a visit every day was quite excessive. Didn't, didn't think that it was, it, you know, it was necessary. So she convinced Keith to reduce the visits to twice a week, which Keith didn't want us in the first place, so he was quite happy to go ahead with that. Now, that gave us a lot of issues, not just in relation to supporting him with medication and, and his health, but something that we didn't think about was his food shopping. And what we used to do is we would go out, buy enough food shopping to last him until the next visit, or so we thought. We didn't realise that Keith would continue to eat until the food had gone because he couldn't remember that he'd just eaten. And it was only because I carried out a planned review in between the two visits that I found out that Keith had no food left in his home and didn't actually know when he'd finished it all. And that, that was a real concern for us. We had problems with health professionals communicating with us and working with us at home instead in the very beginning. We contact them with concerns about his health, with concerns about his legs, wanting to have feedback because they, what they were doing is they'd go out to visit him, they'd tell Keith what the plan of care was, but Keith couldn't remember. So we'd waste valuable time trying to chase him, trying to find out, you know, are we doing the right thing? Is there anything more that we can do to support him or what the next stage is going to be in relation to his care? We also encountered paternalistic attitudes towards Keith, trying to render him passive. And an example of this was he was taken by one of his caregivers to an appointment to go and see a specialist consultant. 
And the specialist consultant said to Keith, Keith, because of your dementia, you cannot manage your legs. Your legs keep deteriorating. You need to go into respite for a period of six weeks and it's for your own good. Keith was beside himself and he was so upset that the consultant didn't seem to take that into consideration and wrote his letter of recommendation to the GP, said this is what was going to have to happen in order for his legs to heal. There was no need for that because Keith felt really angry for a long time but couldn't remember what had upset him. So how do we support Keith? So as I mentioned, Keith was reluctant to have him care because he felt that somebody was going to come in, swoop in, take over, and there were going to people, be people that he didn't like. So part of our service, as Caroline mentioned earlier, is that we, we match our caregivers to our clients. And that's based on like, looking at uh, personalities and, and skills and interests. And so it was very, very important that we match Keith's caregivers to him, as we know that with compatibility, there is the potential for friendship, trust, and a relationship to build. And that was so important that we get, got it right because of Keith's reluctance. All of our caregivers who support Keith have all had the Dementia and um, the Home Instead City and Guilds Dementia Accredited course, and they receive ongoing training and support in relation to Keith's ever-changing needs. They all have got time to care. All of his visits are longer than an hour. Some are two, some are three hours. And that's because we've worked with Keith to set out a plan for each week as to what he would like to achieve. With the time that we have to care, it means that the caregivers can support Keith to do things in his own time. He's not rushed and he's encouraged to do things for himself. And the way that we do this is by breaking down tasks for Keith so that it's simplified. And then we encourage him as to what the next step is, especially as he becomes distracted. For example, when it comes to making his breakfast, the caregiver will get out his favorite bowl, his choices of cereals, and will sit with Keith while he's preparing breakfast and will guide him if he gets distracted as to what the next step will be. They will ask him if he wants support to have a wash in the morning. Sometimes he doesn't want to have a wash, and that's fine, they respect that. But if he does, it's about, again, prompting him as to whether to wash his face or wash the top half of his body, and then gaining consent from him to continue to support him with the areas he can't reach. With dressing also, Keith is quite capable of dressing himself, but sometimes he might put things in, on in the wrong sequence. So once he's chosen what he would like to wear, the caregivers will lay out the clothes for him in order, and they'll place his shoes or his slippers by the door so that he puts his socks on before he puts his shoes and slippers on. So there's little things that we're doing to support Keith where he wasn't able to manage these tasks before without, without our support, but now with the time and care and gentle encouragement, he's able to do these himself. We also support him with making choices in relation to his medication and his leg care. Again, it's about giving him that information so that he can consent to taking his medication or he can make that decision as to whether or not he's going to allow the caregivers to bathe his legs that day and apply prescribed creams. We also support his sister and at the very beginning when we first started, him and his sister didn't have a very good relationship. And we've given his sister lots of guidance and tips on how to prevent Keith from becoming frustrated with her because she would become frustrated with him not understanding that his short-term memory and the fact that he couldn't he, he couldn't answer some of her questions was due to her his dementia we also requested best interest meetings in relation to the issues that we had with the reduced visits and not being able to support him with medication and his leg care, but also in response to um, the consultant's attitude towards putting Keith into respite against his wishes. Um, and the purpose of these meetings was so that Keith could have a voice, so that he could be listened to and heard, and he could tell them that he didn't want to go into respite. And yes, he did want to remain at home and he wanted to eat healthily. So from that, we increased our visits to be able to support him with his leg care, to prevent him going into hospital. And we also referred him to dietetic services so that we could discuss healthy eating options with Keith and to guide him into making healthier choices, but making sure that he still has his fish and chips on a Friday, his cake and all the things that he really enjoys. We also now work closely with the multidisciplinary team. They realise that we've got the same goal as them. We want to keep Keith healthy and at home, and we've also reduced their workload because of this. 
So what's Keith's outcome? Well, because of the time and the care and the support that he gets, he still lives at home. He has an amazing relationship with our brilliant team of caregivers who go over and above for Keith on a regular basis because they really do care about him. Both of his legs are healed, and that is because of the prompt reporting of our team. Um, and this has prevented him from going into hospital. He looks great. He looks really, really well. His home's maintained. His finances are in order. And his sister is more supportive and understands Keith's diagnosis and how it affects him. So this is Keith with one of his caregivers. Now, I don't know whether you remember, but I said that one of his passion is dancing. And he comes to our memory cafe on a monthly basis um, so that he can have a dance with his caregivers, and he absolutely enjoys it. He also has been taken out to the jazz clubs a few times, um, and this, these are the things that he loves to do. He eats a well-balanced diet, apart from the cake and the fish and chips, but we'll forget about that. But the most important thing is that Keith tells me that he's happy. He's active, he has a good quality of life, and that makes me so happy. So we know that dementia will take away people's abilities to be able to carry out tasks independently, and with patience, encouragement, support, and perhaps different approaches such as breaking down tasks in a step-by-step -step stage so as not to overwhelm overwhelm them, you can help that person to be able to live at home for longer and independently. From my point of view, from a home care perspective, I think it's really important to consider introducing care and support early on in their journey with dementia. As, as their needs become more complex, they will have already developed that relationship with their team of caregivers. So when things become stressful and frightening, they'll have those people there that they trust and care for them. Now I know I've said loved and enjoy quite a lot through my presentation, and I did think about taking them out, but love and enjoy are two words to describe what I, about what I do. I love and enjoy what I do. I think it's a real honor to be able to help people to, to stay at home and to live independently and to make a difference to their lives. And I would just like to say thank you for letting me share that with you.